Good morning, everyone. I think we're going to go ahead and mute uh, everyone and begin our service. We're so glad you're here and we have beautiful music to share.
Wow. Just wow, how beautiful. What a beautiful way to begin worship here together this morning. A warm welcome to all. I would invite uh, Lisa Van Egmond and Gretel John to unmute that we might bring greetings from our communities. Good morning. I'm from Hudson Fashion Charge. Reverend Kent is on holiday this week, although you will probably see him in the background on Heidi's Zoom. Um, nothing much happening. Meetings are coming up as we're gearing up for September services, and we are planning to do an in person on the 12th. So, Wyman members, keep an eye on your email because we will be taking reservations for that. And if anybody is interested, we are selling pews from the Cote Church as they will not be needed in our future plans for seating. So if anyone's interested, you can get in touch with Carol Laws or Reverend Kent. And that's it from our end. Thanks so much, Lisa. Exciting plans ahead for all of you. Morning, Gretel. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, my Royal United Church and from all the other churches. Uh, we don't have anything new either. Um, just remember that uh, we're still looking for someone for um, the, the children for Sunday school, the youth. And also don't forget to send in the photos that you um, like, that you have uh, as your favorite ones. And thanks to Michelle for the lovely photo that uh, we're using this morning. Quite an inviting scenery. And thanks for the beautiful prelude as well. So everyone have a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful, bright, sunny summer Sunday morning service. And blessings to everyone. Thank you. And a warm welcome to everyone from Trinity Anjou and uh, those that might be visiting from other churches and other places. We are so glad you're joining us this morning in virtual and real uh, Christian community. Uh, just a few things. Uh, we did have a, a very uh, fulsome and beautiful memorial service yesterday at Trinity. I think we had over 50 people in person and 40 some on screens on Zoom. Uh, to celebrate the life of Gail Purcell, a very dear member of our community uh, who we will miss and yet uh, celebrate her very special and unique way of living and of dying, unfortunately, from, from cancer. But, but living is the accent of Gail's life and uh, fully celebrated with much joy yesterday. Um, just also a note, uh, our friend uh, Dalton, um, many of you know Dalton Liam, he is in hospital this morning, just want to alert our community and uh, if we could keep Dalton in our prayers. Speaking of prayers, once again, for the prayers of the people, if uh, there are people or situations you would like prayer for this morning, you're invited to put them into the chat if you have that ability or uh, we'll ask for phone prayers uh, later at that time. Um, also, I will be disappearing for a few weeks, although like Kent today or David today, uh, you may yet see me uh, pre-recorded, but uh, it's been such a pleasure to be with all of you in these virtual uh, wonderful services, and I look forward to seeing you all again in person or uh, on Zoom soon. So with that, we move into uh, our service this morning as we acknowledge uh, this beautiful land that we live and worship on with these words. Friends, we gather on lands which hold a long and rich history of occupation and stewardship by indigenous peoples for millennia through to the present day. Indigenous peoples such as those from the Haudenosaunee Nation and the Anishinaabeg Nation have deep, strong historical ties to this land. Montreal, known as uh, Diojage to the Haudenosaunee and as Muniang to the Anishinaabeg, has long served as a site of meeting and exchange 
amongst various indigenous groups. So we acknowledge and thank the diverse peoples whose presence marks this territory on which now peoples of the world gather. And we sing number 333 if you have a Voices United at home. This is a day of peace and reconciliation. This is a day of fellowship and renewal. Let us worship God. God, we gather in this space within our own homes and yet sharing this time of worship, this place of your presence, these moments of our lives. We bring all that is good and joyful in our life. We bring all our pain and our concerns. We bring moments of conflict and wounds that have lasted over time. We bring our faith, our hope, and our aspiration. Meet us here and let your spirit be at work among us to open our ears, our hearts, our minds, enliven our worship, and renew our common life together. We ask it in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Yeah. 
The scripture story we're going to hear today reminds me of a little story. Sam's mother found a note from the teacher. Sam seems very angry in school today. That's all it said. Sam's mother wondered what it was all about, so she asked Sam. Sam only shrugged. So Sam's mother asked a very wise question. What color is your anger? It's a good question for us as well. What color is your anger? Is it red? Is your anger red hot? Are you able to fire off angry words and fiery replies, real zingers, smoking hot retorts? Sometimes our anger is red hot and full of heat. Perhaps your anger is green, green with envy and jealousy, anger that others have what you wanted. It's the kind of anger that can make you resentful or want to even ruin the joy of others. Is your anger green? Is your anger an icy blue, silent, aloof, leaving you cool to the touch? Even icy cold, foreboding, inhospitable, the kind of anger that blows people off. That kind of anger doesn't always say what's wrong or try to make things right, but lets others know that they have been offended. That kind of anger puts it all on the other person. Perhaps your anger is clear, transparent, white. Are you someone who knows what is right? And when they see something that is wrong, feels they must fix it? You want to put things right? You want justice and fairness and righteousness? That can be a good thing. Or perhaps your nice white anger is shaded with self-righteousness. Are you sure what other people are supposed to do and can be outraged when people don't reach your high standards? Oh, so often that kind of anger doesn't want to be looked at too closely because people will see that it is tinged with other colors that reveal it is not so lily pure as we might like to pretend. Perhaps your anger is blushing. Someone has embarrassed you or you have embarrassed yourself. You are humiliated. It's easy to use anger to mask our embarrassment or shame. Or is your anger purple? The kind of anger that gets held in, that cannot say a word the purple of holding your anger back, of biting your tongue, of feeling your blood pressure skyrocket? What color is your anger? Oh, come on. We all get angry sometimes. After all, we're human, and anger is a human emotion. Sometimes we get angry for good reasons, and sometimes not. The Bible recognizes it, in the Bible reading this morning, we're told to be angry, but it also tells us to deal with it. We need to know the kind of anger we're dealing with and discover why we're feeling that way. Our anger can tell us a lot about ourselves and our world. It can let us know that things are not right in the world or for ourselves, and it can help us solve those difficulties. We are to do something about it. Be angry, we're told, but make sure your anger is constructive and not destructive. So when you're angry, ask yourself, what kind of anger is it? And do something to make it better. God's love, Christ's grace, and the Spirit's inspiration will help us out. Let us pray. God, you give us rich emotions to help inform us about our world and ourselves. Help us to use these insights wisely to take care of ourselves, of one another, of our world. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Prayers of confession and words of assurance. Let us pray your prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Through Jesus Christ, amen. Words of assurance. Let us pray our words of assurance. No matter where we are, God is there. No matter what we have done, God forgives. No matter our reluctance to accept God, God has accepted us. With that assurance, receive forgiveness and live in fullness and in hope. Amen. Sing for joy, hallelujah, sing for joy. Hallelujah, sing for joy, hallelujah, oh, sing for joy. Hallelujah, sing for joy, hallelujah, oh, sing for joy. Hallelujah, join your voices in exaltation. Strike the heart, let the trumpets abound. Oh, sing for joy. Oh, sing for joy, all ye mighty nations. Sing for joy, make a glorious sound. Sing for joy, all ye mighty people. Join together as one. Hallelujah, sing for joy. Oh, sing for joy. Hallelujah, sing for joy. about the number of church communities founded by the Apostle Paul, with numbers ranging from as far, few as 10 and as many as 20 congregations. What there is no debate about is Paul's insight into the nature of his churches, the opportunities Christ offered them, but also the human and relational problems they would face. He often had to write letters to his communities to instruct them on how to resolve the arguments they'd get into. And today's scripture is a case in point. Let's listen 
now to the Learn Paul's view of how to deal with anger with all its colors. Put more simply, what would Paul advise on the question, how can we all get along? I read from Ephesians 4, 25 to 5-2. So putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth of our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. And do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands. So as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouth, but only what is useful for building up as there is need so that your words may give grace to those who hear and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice and be kind to one another tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the witness of an early Christian community. May we have wisdom for our living. Amen. Thank you so much, Heather, for those words. Would you pray with me, please? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be a witness, O God, to your way of love, justice, and faithful walking with us. Amen. What beautiful words of instruction we hear today from the Apostle Paul. Words that if we truly listened and heard and put into action, however imperfectly, God's kingdom would surely come that much closer. For what could be a better hallmark of Christian witness to a world that seems to just get angrier and angrier than a community seen and felt to be genuine and real in its way of loving. For our church communities in Anjou and in Hudson, in Mount Royal, and in Rosemount to become as places known for their welcome, their safety, a sense of compassion, for generosity, for spirit, and for peace. In other words, Paul's words can become a mirror for us. This is what Christian community looks like and even better feels like. A place where you can come and find a place to belong, to be built up when all around us too often, it seems the fashion these days instead to tear each other down. So while we're looking in the mirror this morning, can I be brave here and admit something to you, seeing as we're all friends? I get super uncomfortable when talking about anger or when feeling angry or even when in the presence of someone else who is angry, 
Is anyone else here anger, conflict, avoidant? Let me see those hands out there. Coming from my white middle class background and my family, we simply didn't do anger when I was growing up. Strong emotion really of, of any kind. There, there was no flashing sign saying, check your emotions at the door, but you get my drift. Now, despite my brother and sister and I, and I of course was a sweet, innocent middle child, got that? Despite the fact we were all fighting all the time, as kids will do, my mom's here, she can raise her hand. I don't think we ever learned really how to channel our anger in a way that took us to a higher level of compassion for one another's human predicament. As kids, we were always jockeying for attention, so needy as we were for affection and approval to know and trust the love that was there for us from our parents. And well, maybe even wanting that love from each other too, let alone the love of God. Somehow I learned that anger, no matter what color, David was so great in bringing that to us, no matter what color, Anger only would lead to a fight that too often I would lose. So somewhere along the way, maybe in my middle school years, I think I just gave up on anger really, pushing it aside or maybe driving it deep down within. Perhaps in your family, or coming from a different culture, you learned to deal with anger differently. I know in some families, anger could be an all too present emotion. We've all come at it from different places and that's okay. But I bring it up because I think too often in Christian community, we don't always do anger well together. I love David's story earlier about all the colors of anger and that far from being a bad word or an emotion we have to suppress, anger is simply a part of our human palette of emotions. There are good reasons to feel angry sometimes, like when we feel hurt or when we fear rejection or when we experience injustice and we know that it just isn't right. Lord knows Jesus got angry. You remember that at the money changers in the temple? Oh my gosh. If Jesus can get angry, then surely we who follow him can too. So how in our lives, in our families, in our church communities, how can we faithfully use words of anger that through the lens of Christian teaching might become for us and for others words of grace? One observation to start our exploration. It isn't easy. Ah. No, not when Paul tells us that we must put away falsehood so we can speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members one of for another. Oh Lord, I want to say, you don't mean it, do you really? To put away falsehood? Right now, the very question of truth is being attacked. 
We see it happening in our neighbors to the south with one third of the American public believing in the big lie that the 2020 federal election was tainted by supposedly widespread voter fraud. This, despite election officials of all parties and countless judges certifying that on the contrary, it was the freest and fairest election the U.S. has ever held. How does it become possible to follow Paul's advice to speak the truth to our neighbors when the conversation becomes mired in a tribalism that no longer can agree on a set of verifiable facts? What we see happening in the US just now is a major cautionary tale. It's what can happen when the members of a nation begin to lose a sense that they or we are all members of one another. As Paul advocated was essential for true community. Paul would advise that to be angry over disagreements or hurts or matters of injustice is a good thing. Be angry, he says, but do not sin. Uh-oh. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. In other words, be angry but express your fear or hurt or whatever is driving your anger so that you can test it against the truth of others you wish to respect. Don't let that anger consume you. Don't let a disagreement or hurt fester into an anger that either turns outward or inward in unhealthy ways. Paul says, let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. Well, my God, isn't that amazing? Paul's words fall like a balm upon my soul this morning. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths. Meaning we must reject all the harsh and mean words spilling from the lips of politicians, pundits, and preachers. Paul calls us to be angry at injustice and to do what we can to make it right, all the while remembering never to demonize those with whom we are in disagreement. For Paul teaches that to demonize the other is a path not to a higher level of compassion for self and other, but rather a way that leads, and I quote, to bitterness and wrath, to wrangling and to slander. Living Christ's way, Paul says, is always to put the truth that in Christ, we are members of one another, you and me. We put that truth first. It's a truth that allows very diverse people to come into common community, even including for the Ephesians, thieves, robbers who are ready to give up their stealing. Even for us, perhaps, including those whose hearts have been made hard by living hard lives. 
people who need a place where they can safely learn to soften again. People maybe like you and like me, who yearn to hear kind words, tender-hearted, words of forgiveness for when we trespass. Because despite our imperfections and mistakes, we know in Christ, we will never be rejected. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loves us and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. What would our Christian communities in Anjou, Hudson, Mount Royal, and Rosemount look like if we practiced that? Never perfectly, that's not the point. But each of us empowered to speak our truth as we understand it in love and open to hearing the truth of the friends sitting, we hope soon back in the pews around us. It would require us to become real with each other, to become vulnerable, which always means we could get hurt, at least at first. But if Paul is right, and we really see in each other a friend in Christ and never an enemy we can demonize or profile or think of as less than or other, we might just stumble into true gospel community, one that is exciting and daring even a little bit scary by how loving we can be. A community of loving, sometimes angry, but always forgiving and growing people. How different is that from what we see going on all around us in our world today? How much is that needed? And how, friends, can we make it so? Amen.
Let us bring our offering, words that are honest and that are spoken in love, actions that are compassionate and respectful, gifts that reflect our devotion to God and to one another. Our offering can be made through our home congregation for the work of the church and Christ's ministry in the world. God, in Jesus, you taught us to deal with anger honestly and to set aside business bitterness and to seek reconciliation with tender-hearted kindness. Strengthen us by your grace that in fellowship with you, we may live in love as Christ loved us, forgiving one another and giving all we have as we seek justice and pursue peace. Amen. Amen, indeed, and our prayers continue. Let us be in prayer. If you have uh, prayer concerns this morning, please feel free to write them in the chat. I've received some already, uh, and we will have an opportunity for phone folks in just a few moments. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for this beautiful day that we get to spend 
an hour or so together. Thank you for this Christian community we form as uh, many congregations, but with one spirit and one heart this day. We think of those who may be mired in an unhealthy anger this morning, Lord, especially people who have power and influence over so many lives, especially those that choose leadership positions, sometimes uh, for nations, sometimes for communities, sometimes even for church communities, Lord. We need to have compassion for each one and try and look with your kindness and your gentle uh, ways uh, through that angriness and that sometimes even hate-filled uh, countenance that we can see on our TV screens or uh, we read about in our papers, we see acted out on battlefields, um, both literal and figurative. And Lord, we must look for the root causes of that, of that anger, the, the fears that perhaps go uh, beyond and behind them. Looking with the eyes of compassion, the eyes of Christ, to see how we might help, how we might um, come alongside, how we might soften so many hearts that have been hardened. Thank you for the words of Paul that give us pause and uh, also give us hope this morning. May they make a difference in our lives and in the lives of this, your world. Oh God, we know there are so many needs in the world uh, this day. We think of those still living with the wildfires raging across um, a good section of the western part of Canada and the US and in the north of Ontario and elsewhere. Places of heat and drought, places where a climate crisis is truly coming into focus and will cause real hardship and pain. Lord, we pray for our governments that they will help Lead, help us lead the way as we confront the climate crisis, as we change our ways of living so that all might live, including the, the wildlife and the creatures who call this planet and share it as our home. God, as the Olympics have closed this morning, we give you thanks again for the hope that those athletes have given us beautifully performing, whether they medal or not, um, giving their best performances, uh, striving for excellence, becoming for us models of, of harmony and hope and healthy competition. Um, and really, uh, as we've been able to watch or read about it, uh, giving us great joy. We pray that all the athletes and uh, coaches and officials will make it safely home. And we thank you for the hospitality of Japan despite the pandemic. And we pray that again, uh, COVID will um, be put at bay uh, as people get vaccines and as uh, people take caution uh, that we may open once again fully we pray to one another in safety. Oh God, you know the prayers of our hearts this morning, those of our communities, and we share them with you now in this time of silence. And as uh, we name these special ones, oh God, we pray this morning for Stanislaus, and we pray for the people of Burma, again, needing your special care, O oh Lord, dealing with a time of great upheaval and uh, oppression and, and yet hopefulness, we pray uh, for freedom to be restored, O oh God. 
we remember in our prayers, uh, Sharon and Tina and Argenta. We lift up uh, Jessica's sister and her children in our prayers this day. We lift up Dalton, praying that he will soon be out of hospital. We remember our friends Julia and Shirley as they go through a rough time just now. We remember the Purcell Cameron families after losing a uh, beautiful Gail and all of us who will miss her Lord. If there are anyone on the phone that have prayer concerns to share, please dial star six to let us know. Hearing none, we thank you, God, for listening to our prayers, for hearing, for answering, for inspiring us to be the answer to our prayers and the prayers of the world as we live lives of uh, compassion and grace this day and always. Amen. Must rise. There is a time that we must stand. There is a time that we must come together for blessed our the place where hatred breathes and turn in fear the spirit breathes the
and it will come, come and bend again and call us time where we have been together for oh, blessed our lives blessed our love and the blessed the I mean, that was beautiful. Thank you so much. Friends, we have heard the words, there is a time we must rise. Could this be our time to become Christian communities that are different from what is going on around us, noticeably different by how we uh, deal with anger, how we uh, be honest about our disagreements, and how we love each other even still, all because of Christ who makes us one. Let that be our way forward this day and every day. Amen.
Oh, beautiful, Michelle. Thank you. Summertime, that's what we're all about. As summer continues, uh, we're glad uh, for folks that are able to stay for some time of refreshment and uh, conversational refreshment and uh, coffee if you have it, perhaps at home. Thank you for joining us in this beloved joint community. If you need to leave, uh, we will ask you uh, to have a safe week and hope to see you back here next week. And I don't know if we're gonna have breakout rooms, are we? I could probably do that if somebody else isn't taking care of it. That would be wonderful, Jessica. I don't hear voices arising. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna suggest be brave everybody and maybe say, uh, did you do anger when you were growing up? How about that? that yeah, we're good. all coming from different places and it would be fascinating to know and hear if you would be so bold um, or choose a topic of your choice. But uh, do not be afraid in Christian community. Amen. And I think Simon was waving goodbye. I'm not sure. Bonjour, Nissimo. So we've got a few breakout rooms here, but I noticed that not all of them are terribly full. So uh, if I see a, a breakout room with very few people, I'm just going to move everybody over into a different one. All right. Oh, thank you so much. And I think we can stop recording. Good plan. Can you do that, Reed? Just I so guess we don't I can. Start again. <laughs>